There was a phrase that Kai Kai Kobarin Pesen Kosir Kobarin Banan. I will explain to you what that means. There is Pesen and there is Banan. Pesen is death, Banan is poverty. So it is said in this community if you must die, it is better to die of death than to die of poverty. Because you are dying anyway. So it's and so to contextualize that into this debate, we don't want to die in this continent. We don't want to die of debt, but we also don't want to die of poverty. That is why we must have a conversation around multilateral development banks and concessional financing and how we can finance our economies using resources that do not punish us. And when we make this proposition, we have tremendous respect for our multilateral development banks. They are doing their best. We have the best of respect for them. But we believe they can do better. We, can be, we believe that there is an opportunity. We need to explore the SDR, Special Drawing Arts Rights Window. And this time round, we want to have that window when it's made available because it is possible. Let those who need the resources get, not those who, not those who don't. In the last experience, those who did not need the resources got more than those who needed the resources. We need to have a paradigm shift this time round. Many of our countries are headed into debt distress because of climate change. Let's be honest. We are suffering the most, whether it is in the Sahel with drought, whether it is in the Horn of Africa with drought, whether it is in South Africa and the southern part of our continent with cyclones. And we are saying the suffering is across the globe, but we carry the biggest brunt. I'll give you, I'll contextualize this. And because of climate change, we are forced to divert resources that are meant for economic growth into dealing with the effects of climate change. I will contextualize this. In Kenya, we lost two and a half million heads of livestock in northern part of Kenya. Combined with Ethiopia and Somalia and Djibouti, we lost nine and a half million heads of livestock. So what did I have to do in Kenya? So in Kenya, I've had to increase resources meant for school feeding from a million and a half children in school under school feeding, we've had to scale up this year to four million kids in school to be put under school feeding. And we've had to rearrange the budget to provide for that. So when we say climate change is destroying our economies, we are not making statements. We are making statements of fact. And that is what is driving many of our economies in that direction. Yes, it is true. We contributed the least. Yes, it is also true, we are suffering the most. But in this crisis is Africa's opportunity. And that is what we want to focus on, Africa's opportunity to unlock the tremendous resources that we have for green energy transition. And we must exploit this opportunity. And number three, so that I conclude, is that this is the continent that has the highest investment potential. We are only limited by two things. Number one, we are limited 
as I said earlier in my statement, by high interest rates for development capital. Many of our countries, and we are here and they say figures don't lie, nine countries are already in debt, in debt distress in our continent, over the cliff. 13 countries are classified as uh, high risk. And another 17 countries are classified as moderate risk. And the biggest contributor to debt distress in our continent is high interest rates. We pay five times more than others. Meaning that in fact, the architecture is set up in a manner that if you borrow, it will be difficult for you to pay. And that is why we need a conversation and a very candid conversation. And we are saying this in all honesty around how do we get concessional funding? How do we pay as much as others are paying? How do we get Africa away from paying five times more? And I asked in this gathering, we're not asking to be favored. We're not asking for to be treated differently. We want a fair financial system that treats everybody equally. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that is not too much to ask. A fair international financial architecture is not an unfair proposition to make. At the Youth Summit, we saw for ourselves the immensity of the potential that we can unleash simply by facilitating positive youth action at all levels in every sector. Potential and opportunity are both futuristic propositions. The African Climate Summit has been designed to enable us to locate our intense engagements and the most energized discourse in order to facilitate imaginative, problem-solving, and innovative interventions that are bold enough to meet the critical challenges of the present and future times. This is why potential, opportunity, the future, and youth are recurrent themes that underlie our interactions in this summit. We have convened here to consult, deliberate, and collaborate in imagining and designing the future of climate action globally and its implications for African aspirations to achieve shared prosperity within one generation. This summit is dedicated exclusively to the transformation of potential into opportunity, the conversion of ideas into actions, and the turning of plans into results. It is about creating a firm consensus, designing effective strategies, securing commitments, and forging transformative partnerships that will drive climate action in the direction and at the rate required to pull our continent and planet back from the brink of a climate disaster. The urgency of this moment is informed by the knowledge that climate change is the greatest challenge, not only to the well-being of humanity, but to every existence of life on Earth, and that only urgent and coordinated action on a global scale can stop the impending catastrophe by lowering greenhouse gas emissions and reducing their concentration in the atmosphere. This is an immense and formidable challenge, even at the best.